Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be colliding things with an object that is going to represent our solar system's sun and we're going to find out what happens if you get a lot of objects colliding with the object in the middle. Anyway, let's experiment here and welcome to What The Math. So originally what I was actually trying to do was create a stable system with many many objects in the same orbit orbiting around uh, the same point in space. In other words, I was trying to find out how many Earths or how many Marses, how many Jupiters can you actually place in the same region of space in the same orbit and have them basically st uh, stably orbit around the central star. But accidentally I created this simulation that I wanted to actually uh, show you here because it does look really really cool. And here what we're going to do is this, we're going to place quite a lot of objects, specifically 300 objects, uh, that are going to represent various planets, and we're going to place them around uh, this particular object in a relatively ordered manner. So now, if I were to basically generate them, they would be, uh, they would be at a distance of about one astronomical unit away from um, the Jupiter in the center, and all of them would basically look like little moons, except that they would also be very, very massive. Each of these moons is about 80 masses of Earth. What is interesting here, though, is how they actually are going to start interacting with each other, especially if I either uh, put them in auto orbit, or even better, stop their velocity completely. So, if I actually just stop them now, and we basically observe the orbital mechanics here in action, you're going to start seeing something really cool happening. And I, at least I thought it was pretty cool. First of all, uh, this happened to me by accident when I accidentally forgot to give the uh, planets here uh, an orbital speed around the central object. They kind of started to slowly move toward the point in the middle and created this very beautiful pattern. You're going to see this happening in a few seconds right now. And here we go. Okay, so a lot of them also started colliding with each other. And they're going to start basically uh, consuming each other. They're going to start acquiring velocities because of the orbit that they're creating with each other. And it's all going to be very random, uh, very, very unpredictable. And then once they're done colliding with each other, they're going to start moving toward the central Jupiter. But if you actually uh, were paying attention in the beginning of the video, I made my central Jupiter 76 masses of Jupiter. There's a reason for that specific number, it says it right here. Uh, this is about a little bit before a, um, a brown dwarf, or I guess a very ma massive gas giant, actually becomes a star. So we're, we want to see if any of these objects actually hit the central Jupiter and finally turn it into a star. But you'll notice that here the actual motion of every single object is so random, it's very very unpredictable. It's extremely unpredictable, as a matter of fact. And so the chance of them hitting the central point in the middle is currently not very high. There's a big chance that most of them will actually end up getting completely thrown out of the system. And this kind of gives you an idea of how difficult it is to actually hit um, anything in space. For an asteroid to actually land on a planet, to, to basically collide with the planet, the chance uh, of that is actually very, very, very low. And whenever we do receive collisions with asteroids, uh, it is actually purely by luck. Or I guess, in this case, malfortune. Because it's not a very lucky event. But notice how what started as very orderly, very organized, and very, very specific is now a complete mess all over the place. And every time I, I run the simulation, the pattern changes completely as well. If you do actually give them a little bit of orbital speed, they'll create a much more interesting pattern. I'll show it to you maybe in the next simulation. Uh, but right now, it is kind of random. And except for this side. This side, surprisingly, didn't really do much. Uh, as a matter of fact, it seems like these particular objects here haven't really changed their trajectory at all. I guess they didn't have any collisions. And so let's see what happens here. We're going to run this a little bit longer. And we're going to see how all of these objects uh, interact with each other, but most importantly, how they will interact with the central, I guess in this case, you could call it a brown dwarf, called Jupiter. And here we go. So the first one just passed by without doing anything. 
and we're going to just decrease the speed here a little bit and just look around until we see something coming close to us. So far nothing is on the collision course. And just to show you the paths so far, you can kind of see that all of them are basically all over the place. And remember, in the beginning, we actually stopped their velocity. So technically, when you think about it, they should have been all headed toward the Jupiter on the collision course, right? But because of the orbital interactions with each other, they all basically change each other's paths. And this is why orbital dynamics are so unpredictable and so difficult to actually correctly uh, calculate. This is what happened to one of them. It passed by too close. And so now it basically fell apart because of the tidal forces. But some of these rocks actually now have become little, uh, I guess you could call them miniature planets, creating a miniature asteroid field in a sense. So let's uh, just run this a little bit faster until maybe something collides with this Jupiter and maybe it turns it into a star. But the chance of it happening is suddenly not so high anymore, unlike in the beginning of the simulation. And look at all the paths. Uh, this is insane. It's, it's basically all completely random now. It's all over the place. And uh, I didn't actually even expect to have sudden objects orbiting so close to this um, central brown dwarf. I'm going to run this a little bit faster. And we're going to basically wait for all of them to pass at least once just to see where they kind of end up. But the vast majority of them will probably actually end up not just missing Jupiter, but probably just completely flying away from the system. And there is this, uh, almost no chance now for it to actually become a star. I don't really expect any of them to collide with it. So let's see if any of them prove me wrong. Uh, but what's, what is interesting here is that this kind of gives you an idea of how complex the orbital interactions are even uh, in, in small systems, in, in systems with only 300 objects. Obviously our solar system has a lot, a lot more of these. And so the actual orbital interactions are a lot more complex as well. And the actual start of the, of the simulation was 300 objects evenly spaced with no actual velocity in the beginning and a central object with about 76 uh, times the mass of Jupiter. And this is what you get as a result. This insane, crazy looking, um, I guess you could call it a brown dwarf system because technically this would be a brown dwarf. So now I'm gonna accelerate this a little bit higher because I think pretty much all of the objects have already passed by uh, this Jupiter. And we can now probably expect it to kind of just run away from here. Now notice how it actually gained speed as well. And that's because the objects in the system, their total mass was equivalent to 76 Jupiters. Oh, and I just realized, I think those rocks just collided with my Jupiter. Yeah, they made its mass a little bit bigger than before. The asteroids actually did fall onto the surface. But it's not a star yet, unfortunately. Uh, but because of the interaction with those masses that were passing close to it, oh, this might make it a star after all, if these rocks actually do end up on the surface. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, because of these interactions, it actually gained a speed of about 6.7 kilometers per second, even though initially it was basically sta uh, standing still. Now, if any of these large chunks does fall on the surface, it might get enough mass to become a star. It's only missing about 0.3 masses of Jupiter, which is uh, about 30 masses of Earth. But no, nothing. Still nothing. Still, unfortunately, nothing. And look at that, there's a binary system right there. This is also completely randomly generated. We've created a binary planetary system that's sort of just moving by itself. Very, very cool. And this, in a sense, is a really good representation of several theories that deal with uh, probability. Specifically, of course, the chaos theory, which does speculate that even a small, um, a tiny deviation from the norm will usually create unpredictable events. And also, just the idea of uh, uncertainty principle, because we don't really know exactly um, where things will end up, especially if we're looking for accuracy. We can only predict it theoretically by using statistics and probability. Now, what did we end up with at the end here? 
we seem to be having we seem to have some sort of a brown dwarf with at least one two three i think stable uh planetary objects around it with some other objects kind of being in a more unpredictable and more eccentric orbit uh, there's also definitely still a lot of interaction and a lot of instability but i think if i run this long enough we'll actually eventually end up with something that probably looks a lot more like a typical brown dwarf system with several planets on the surface uh, not a surface sorry, in orbit and also just an actual brown dwarf and not really a star in the middle so that was an interesting experiment and definitely not something that i would i would have predict would happen right away in one of the previous simulations where i ran this and maybe we'll try this again actually let's, let's try this again where I also use very similar parameters with a central object above about 76 uh, masses of Jupiter and a lot and a lot of, uh, in, this, in this case it's 300 actually, uh, planets of, I guess, a little bit more than the mass of Earth in orbit around this central object. And I also give them a little bit of uh, velocity actually, they weren't really standing still. And you'll see what actually happens here. What, what does end up happening in this situation, if you give them a little bit of velocity, is that they actually do end up, um, surprisingly, kind of moving in a very orderly fashion. But then sometimes they actually end up just crashing into the uh, central Jupiter at a very, very, very fast speed. Now, because we've given them a little bit of velocity here, they're not really interacting with each other as much anymore because there's actually a little bit of a distance between them. Um, and so they're not really uh, as gravitationally attracted toward each other as they are toward the central object. Now, their initial velocity is not very high here, but it was enough for them to basically not be attracted to each other. And notice how it creates a very beautiful and actually a lot more organized and, in a sense, predictable pattern. So here, if I run this faster, you'll see that it sort of just closes in on this Jupiter in the middle. This is how beautiful and how unusually almost like mesmerizing it actually looks. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit just because we want to witness some of the collisions before they happen. They will at some point become or start moving close enough to each other where they'll actually start attracting each other as well. So this pattern is not going to... Oh, there you go. That was the first collision right there. Second collision. Uh, they're not going to stay like this forever. You can kind of see explosions happening uh, if you look close enough. There we go. The explosion started to occur. This is obviously the collisions between the planets. Some of them did move close enough toward each other. But they're still really kind of moving toward the center here. Now, whether they hit the Jupiter is another question. And even one of them should be enough for this Jupiter to turn into a star. Uh, or I think it, maybe a few of them, actually. Not one. One will not be enough. But the pattern itself, though, is pretty interesting. It started very orderly, and then as they start interacting with each other, it becomes, once again, a little bit less predictable. So let's wait for this to kind of finish, and let's see what we end up with after maybe just a few minutes of the simulation here. And once again, none of them actually hit the Jupiter for one reason or another, mostly because a lot of them actually gain a little bit of lateral velocity, and so it just ended up being a very unusual pattern of uh, various planets just kind of passing by close enough, but not really hitting Jupiter at all. So the only reason it is happening is because they're still basically gravitationally um, interacting with each other as well. They, it's not just the Jupiter itself that's attracted them, but they also attract each other. So if I do hold velocities here, uh, they will start heading toward Jupiter. And at this point, they might actually hit it. Actually, a lot of them are hitting it now. Uh, but without holding velocities, it's going to be very difficult for us to basically create that star that I wanted to create. Now, if I wait long enough here, we'll probably end up with a star finally. Because a lot of them are actually headed straight forward right now. And the big moment of truth is coming up really soon. I think there's maybe a few more collisions that need to happen for it to actually start the nuclear reaction on the inside and become the smallest ever red dwarf because it's about to cross the limit of mass where it needs to basically um, start its own nuclear reaction on the inside oh okay or maybe not no there's there's some more coming 
No, I think there's maybe a few more collisions that we need to have for it to actually transform. And unfortunately, the game is telling me I'm running this too fast. And there we go. Look at that. There is that final collision. And now we've become a star at a mass of about 78.8 Jupiters. Well, and there you have it. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Now you know a little bit more about the unpre unpredictability of uh, orbital dynamics and just how things actually interact with each other in space. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.